Cool. Okay. So let's get started. Yes. 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 Uh, <laughs> so now we're spending three two hours here, and I this is one of the names that I actually can't pronounce properly. Uh, he's going to which is fine to talk about DigiCam because he's a DigiCam ninja, and you're going to learn a few tricks from the guy himself. Uh, well, thank you, thank you, and. Uh, before we start, I have good news and bad news. The good news is that I don't have any slides. And the bad news is that I'm going to do a demo uh, on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, and I just pray that everything works. And if it doesn't, just blame me. So, uh, let me say that I'm really happy to see so many people here, uh, because I'm competing with a very interesting talk in the other room. And uh, I thought that if I had uh, someone I could talk, uh, just a single person, I would certainly consider it uh, a success, but I can see a lot of faces, I'm very happy to see it. So uh, the original idea was to, to, to give a workshop where I start with uh, explaining uh, my personal uh, photographic workflow and then dive into uh, individual features and look uh, uh, and give you in-depth uh, look into some of the uh, functionality, some functionality of the uh, DigiCam. But since I only have half an hour, more or less, uh, I will uh, do it another way around. I'll show you some uh, features that I find very interesting and uh, that can be very useful for you to, to, to know and master. And then, if I have time, I'll uh, Show, give you a brief in, in a demo of my personal workflow. So let's dive into it. My first personal favorite is so called image quality search. Let's imagine a situation, and that's probably something pretty much all of you can relate. Uh, you went on vacation in an interesting exotic country, you get back home, you have something like 3,000 photos. Some of them are inevitably either out of focus, uh, underexposed or uh, uh, overexposed, and they're just cracking. So you need to sort them out. So if you do this manually, you can do that, but it's like uh, gardening with a teaspoon. So Digicam recently, relatively recently, introduced a new feature called uh, Image Quality Sort, which allows you to, to automate this task. And this uh, feature allows you to sort uh, out photos that are either not in focus um, or blurry, that are noisy, um, with a very high compression rate and compression ratio, so they, uh, they have done some compression artifacts and so on. The good thing about this feature is that it doesn't do anything to your photos, it just marks them as such. And uh, it uses three flags that are already available in DigiCam. Um, accepted, or photos that the image is so quality sort of consider fine. And uh, painting for photos that are undecided, maybe they are good, maybe they are not. And red as my guess, for photos that are not good. So it's still an experimental feature, so it's a bit of hit and miss. Sometimes it uh, marks photos that are perfectly okay as, as bad uh, for a variety of reasons. For example, I photograph a lot of concrete buildings that have very rough texture, and it often happens that uh, image, image quality is a sort of consider this a noisy photo. So, but as I said, the good thing is that uh, it doesn't do anything with your uh, photos except marking them as bad or good or whatever. Uh, it has some same defaults which you can try. I would suggest if you want to, to, to try this feature, create a separate album, put some photos, good and bad, and run image uh, quality sorter a couple of times and try to fine tune uh, the default settings. This feature is not enabled by default in DigiCam, so you have to enable it in the settings uh, menu. And that is for a good reason, because it's still not as experimental. Once you've done that, there is a very nice tool in DigiCam called Maintenance, that allows you to perform a lot of housekeeping tasks, including image quality sort. So you just hit the OK button, and it should do the job. 
So it says that nothing happens here, but let's pretend that some of the photos are marked with, uh, uh, with, the, with the flags, and you know, and you will immediately know how to uh, what to do with these photos. So let's say, yeah, it's finished, it's done, and as you can see, that it's actually pretty good at uh, marking photos. Um, let's see what we have here. For example, this is definitely something I would consider in focus an okay photo, uh, but it was marked as painting, meaning that image quality so is not sure whether it's good or bad. And once you've done that, you can do the labels sidebar to quickly locate the photos you want. For example, if you want to, to find all the photos that are considered good. You choose the accept items and you will see all the good photos. So then you can copy it to another location or do whatever you want with them. Or you can see all the photos that are maybe good or maybe bad. You can use the painting uh, filter to find these photos. So this way you can quickly uh, sort your collection and uh, weed out the photos that you don't like. Good. So, next feature is geotagging. How many of you use geotagging in Digicam? No one. <laughs> Do you geotag your photos? Okay, you really should. Because this is a really cool feature um, of functionality. Actually, it's not a feature, it's, 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 it's a in time module that allows you to geotag photos by a variety of uh, in a variety of ways. For example, say I want I took photos in Tokyo and I want to geotag them as such. So I go to let's see sorry this one. So this opens a dedicated interface for geotagging photos that we just recited so you can better see this. So there are several things you can do here. First of all, this. So the easiest and the laziest way to, to geotag your photos is to simply do a search. Like, for example, this, these photos were taken somewhere in Tokyo, let's say, Bukuro, Tokyo. And this gives me the possible matches. So from here, there are two ways I can go. I can either locate a marker on the map. Fortunately or unfortunately, these photos are already geotagged. So I can like leave a mark on the map and then just drag the photos on the map. The other more convenient way of doing things is to select all the photos, right click on the desired location and say and choose move selected image to this to this. Okay. It works some works with the microphone. And um, yeah, choose the move, move to this position. Uh, the command. Uh, another thing you can do if you are really dedicated to, to geotagging is to have a, a geotracking application on your mobile device that records in a, a tracks in GPX format, in the GPX format, and then use the geolocation, geotagging module in Digicam to, to geocorrelate your photos. This requires some dedication because you have to remember to sync time on your uh, mobile device, your camera, then you have to remember to activate the tracking on your uh, mobile device, the transfer, blah, blah, blah. So that is only for dedicated uh, person. But it's very, very nice to, to be able to do that because this way you can geotag uh, hundreds or even thousand photos in one go. My favorite thing, way to geotag photos is a little bit different. So whenever I uh, photograph with my proper camera, I have my, my smartphone with me, with a camera that supports geotagging. So I snap what I call the reference image uh, with my 
<laughs> with my uh, smartphone. Uh, and it's uh, automatically geotagged. So, and it syncs automatically to thank you. Thank you very much. And it syncs uh, all the photos uh, from my smartphone to Google Photos. And the nice thing about it is that let's hope that there are no any. Uh, Compromising photos here. Okay, this is the photo I took today, and the good thing is that I have coordinates. The bad thing is that it's a format that is not understood by Digicam. So I don't want a very simple batch script that does this for me. For me. It simply reformats the copy text into a Digicam compatible uh, uh, geo format. And uh, I'm no programmer uh, by any stretch of imagination, so um, don't hit me on the head with a stick when you see the code. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but it's only three lines, and the first one copies, uh, uses the content of the clipboard uh, and the TR tool to remove, to strip white spaces, and uh, then it uses notify send thing to, to inform me that it has been copied and copies the uh, correct data, correctly formatted data into the clipboard, back to into the clipboard. So this basically works something like this. And this is the scary part because I hope it works. It does. So, as you can see, there is a notification that the geographic coordinates has been uh, processed and, and copied into the clipboard. And then, then all I have to do is to select the photos I want to geotag and the geotag module, right click. And say paste coordinates. It's actually much faster and easier than it sounds. So if you want to try this code, uh, the script, or if you want to improve it and you have an idea how to improve it, you are most welcome. Uh, the code is hosted on uh, GitLab, and it's just a snippet. So far, so good. Let's get back to the So there is another feature that I like a lot. I don't know about you, but I like filters. And uh, I've actually used Digicam to, to create my own filters. It's not filters, it's more, more like a presets. Uh, I have a, my own collection of presets that I particularly like. So let's see if we can do something about one of these photos. So let's see. I would like to. I would like to create a simple retro look for my photos. And the easiest way to do that is to lower the contrast. I'm exaggerating this a bit so you can actually see something on the screen. Now let's introduce some color shift. This and let's adjust. Okay, I like this. Very nice. The problem is that I have dozens of other photos I would like to apply this effect to. So the idea of doing this for every single photo is not exactly appealing. So what I can do, I can use a new feature in Digicam that supports so-called hull club tables. These are basically color lookup tables, or tables that allow the, allow the application to perform color transformation. And it's actually very easy to use. Uh, because it's supported by uh, the Convert tool in Image Magic, so you can create, run a single command, and this command gives you this very nice, trippy looking table. What do you do then? You copy this table into Digicam. Open it for editing. Apply all the exact 
uh, effects and color transformation you want. Like I showed you, reduce contrast, uh, introduce color shift, um, and, and adjust curves. And then you save this file and move it into a um, location where Digicam has all its uh, um, CLAD uh, tables. And what you get is when you open a photo for editing, If you open it for editing, then go to effects color effects. You will actually see your effects in the list of, of, of the presets. Like in my case, I named my preset Retro Tastic. I copied it into the location, and then it's there. So this way, applying an effect is just a matter of clicking one button. Actually, you, didn't, you don't even need to click a button because, yeah. Can you resize the window? Ah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yes. So these are these are presets, and this is the one I added myself. So this way you can add as many presets as you like, and uh, you basically can do any operation or any color modification operation, I say, and uh, save it as a preset. And finally, this is a little bit geeky. I don't know whether you need it, but uh, I sort of like to play with uh, metadata. Uh, as you may or may not know, uh, Digicam saves everything in a, in a SQLite school, school database. And the good thing is that you can extract this data and analyze it. And, uh, for example, I use several digital cameras, and sometimes I would like to know, hmm, which camera do I actually use most? Maybe I should uh, sell other ones. So I created a simple script, simple by definition, because I'm not a program. That does this for me. So all I need to do is provide a path, or I can copy it in my path, and then I can use a parameter. This script supports two parameters. One is cameras, and this one returns the cameras I use and how many times I've used them. I hope you can see the text. And the good thing is that it also imports the data in the comma separated as a comma separated file, so you can easily import it in any spreadsheet application. And uh, if you are into it, you can even make nice looking graphs. And you can do the same with lenses, which can be useful if you have several lenses or you are planning to buy a lens and you think. What is actually my favorite focal length? Which, uh, which camera, which lens do I actually use? Which focal lens is my favorite? Like, for example, I have a zoom lens and I would like to invest in, in, in a uh, primary lens and I need to figure out, okay, do I need 50 millimeter or do I need uh, 85 or whatever? So I can just run the script with the lenses parameter And this gives me all the lenses I use in my photos and all the lenses. So the script itself is very simple, as I said. It's, if you look at it, it's just a bunch of if-then statements with uh, some um, SQL inquiries, queries. And you can extend it any way you want. And you can take a look at the I think the, the table in uh, Digicam data is called image metadata. So you can take a look at it and see what fields are available and what data is available, and you can do all kinds of interesting things if you are into it. So, how am I doing on time? So, if you want, we have two minutes more and then it's a question. Okay. Uh, I suggest that let's, let's do questions and answers because it's supposed to be a 
dialogue, or I would like to make it a dialogue. I would like to hear your experience in Digicam and if you have any tips and tricks and stuff. So please go ahead. Okay, and if I have some more time, then I will introduce it to my own uh, workflow. I've been using Digicam as my primary and actually my only um, photo management application since 2010. So, uh, pretty much in seven, during seven years, I've been obsessively developing my own workflow, and I don't know whether I should be proud of it or embarrassed and the fact that I use so much time on this. But it's actually pretty simple. I use, uh, I use Digicam from, for, for everything, from importing photos to sharing them. And the first thing I do, I import them. Uh, I don't think I have time to, to show you the import thing, but uh, I'll show you something different. So the import module uh, allows you to rename photos in a variety of ways. Like for example, I prefer to rename my photo by date and time. So I can immediately see, and if you take a look at my collection, you can immediately, I can immediately see that when the photo has been taken. So this one was in July, June, sorry, uh, 2017. And to do that, you can simply use the rename feature in the import module. And the advantage of this approach is that as soon as you import, the Digicam does the dummy job for you, and it's just the, the rename all for it automatically. And it works very simple, and there is another feature that uses the same uh, type of functionality, uh, is the rename. So you basically choose uh, date and time as option, then you select whatever format you like. You can even select the custom form format and then specify your own format. I prefer to name it like year, oops, sorry. month, day, hour, minute, second. So, and actually here you can already see the, the result. So when you import photos, Digicam automatically renames all the photos and you have it in your database or Digicam. So the second thing is tagging and, and uh, flagging the photos. So I use these uh, flags to, to tag the photos uh, and, and so I can quickly see what, what I want to do with them. For example, photos that I immediately like and I think, oh well, wow, that was pretty good in the shorts. I use the green flag to mark them. If I'm not sure whether the photo is good or bad, maybe I should process it later, then I use the yellow flag and I just immediately discard the, the photos I don't like, so there is no need for the red flag. And the next thing I do, and this is also a very uh, nifty feature if you should in both RAW and uh, JPEG. As you can see, on this screen, I have duplicates of every photo. That's because I have both RAW files JPEGs. So to work on it with JPEGs, you can choose a filter called Mind Filter and say, okay, I would like to see only JPEG files. And it will automatically hide all the uh, raw files. And then process the photos. And what I do at the end, I stack them. So so that each stack contains both the raw file, JPEG, and the process folder. Uh, this is my personal approach, and I started using it way before Digicam introduced versioning. So there is uh, the new version of Digicam allows you to do all that automatically using the version the functionality. Um, but the problem with this approach is that when you use version, you can end up with multiple files for each photo. And if you do something outside the Gcam with your photos, that would be a problem because you end up with... Your hard disk will be littered with files that may or may not have any value. So, uh, 
once I've done that, I can use various options to find my photos and to, to, to filter them. The thing is that I don't put photos or categorize photos in albums because Digicam does this for me. Uh, Digicam has all the features you need to find and filter your photos. So, theoretically, and that's how I do it, I just pile everything in one uh, root album and I just uh, use the uh, features that, that the Digicam offers me. Like, for example, uh, the left bar, sidebar, contains the dates uh, section. And here, Digicam automatically shows you all the photos neatly organized by dates, by year, by month, and so on. So, to find a photo, all photos taken in 2014, I just go here. And if I would like to find all the photos taken in April, I go here, and I can drill down uh, the hierarchy all the way down. Or I can use the timeline section, which is just another way of showing my photos, but they are presented as these very nice uh, bars. And what these bars mean is that, I don't know if you can see this, this is May, this is September, and the next one is January. So that's when I took some photos, and the size of the bar, the height, indicates how many photos there are. So, apparently, according to this database, I took most photos in May. And I can actually see them right away. And then we talked a little about so the geotagging, and here is another clever thing. Let's say you want to see all your photos you took on your trip to Paris. You can use the map uh, search interface, and you can just zoom on the photos you like, or you can draw a rectangle around the area where, which you would like to view. And did you come, I don't know, can you see this? That I draw a sort of region, and it shows all the photos in this region. So that's pretty much my uh, workflow. <laughs> So if you have good ideas how it can be improved, or if you have any questions, raise a hand. Okay. So, yeah? so what's the current state of thinking on Windows? Do you know that? Uh, no, because it's not... Uh, I, I know that there is a volunteer doing the uh, packaging for Windows, and uh, as far as I know, I don't use Windows for good reason. So, um, but as far as I know, he's pretty, pretty up to date. I mean, uh, he releases uh, Windows installers like maybe two or three days after the official release of Digicam. By the way, uh, I don't know if you know that uh, starting with version 5.5, .5, I think, uh, Digicam is available as an app image package. So the good news is that you can try the new version even without installing it or compile it from, from source code properly. Um, and that's a really nice feature. Or oh, I don't know if it's a feature, it's a very nice thing to have to be able to run the application um, without installing it. The downsides are uh, it's a little bit slower in the start because as the lead developer told me it does create some virtual file system and I have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, and that takes time. Uh, but yeah, it's a very nice way to try. I hope I, I answered your question. Have you tried the face recognition and detection? Um, does it work? Um, it works. Uh, it's still marked as experimental, and it has been experimental for the last probably three or even five years. Uh, it works, but it, it could lead to some funny results, uh, like if, especially if you have uh, images of, of, uh, of animals, it will mark them as, it, it might recognize them as people, 
And uh, if you have pictures, animals, and your girlfriend in the same album, that could lead to very uh, undesirable results. But yeah, it uh, it works. It works, but it's not perfect. Any more questions? Yeah, I know we're all tired. <laughs> but the good news is that there is profit rate right after that. So. Okay, so. okay. thank you very much, guys. <laughs>